on one just released sky swap ai as a standalone slash plugin now if you are on the on one plus everything subscription or you own 2023.1 on one 2023.1 then this is already built in for you and you're good to go all you have to do is open it up and start working now, if you don't have the subscription or the standalone, this is a one-time purchase of $29.99. I can save you 20% if you use Free Will Photos 20 at checkout. Now, this is all of the most updated features of the SkySwap AI built into a standalone. Now, this is a great application for anyone who may be working in a program like Apple Photos or Affinity Photos, and you want to swap out your skies, then you can do that pretty easily. And we're going to jump into the software now and just kind of take a look at it. So here we are inside of the computer looking at SkySwap AI standalone 2023. And when I uploaded this image, it automatically built a mask around it. Now, this isn't the greatest mask, so we will have to clean this up a little bit, but it's pretty good, right? I'm not going to worry about it, uh, about the cleaning so much right this second. But what we will do is just go ahead and throw a new sky in there. So I'm going to put a storm sky in there and see what happens. And honestly, even without cleaning up the mask, this worked out pretty good. And I could, I could live with the results that I'm getting here, right? So this is, this is the before and this is the after. Now, obviously, we probably want to take this a little bit further. So let's find a different sky, maybe not so dark of a stormy sky. Let's see what this sky looks like. This doesn't look realistic, but you can see here. Let me zoom in for you. You can see here. I am not doing very good with this mask because the sky is shining through on the horse and, you know, it just doesn't look good. So we'll have to clean that up. But maybe we want to put some stars behind them. And, you know, you could really play around with this, make it your own. But let's go ahead and do a real edit now. So I'm going to click on Occudrone. And we'll choose this guy. Yeah, this guy looks pretty uh, decent for what we're trying to accomplish. Now I'm going to zoom in and get this into a good working area. Now, just like inside of the On One 2023 standalone version or any version of 2023 that you're using, you have the ability to modify your mask. And all I'm gonna do is click on the mask, hit the letter M to get my masking tool. Oh, I'm sorry, hit the letter B to get my brush. And using the left and right brackets, I can make my brush size larger or smaller, hitting Shift X. Same keyboard shortcuts work in the standalone as the original. And I need to go Shift X and paint out. And I'm going to paint back my horse. Now, as I get closer to the edge of the horse, what I may wanna do is hit Command R to turn on my perfect brush, all right? So if I hit Command and R, it just tells you that I turned on the perfect brush. I don't need that uh, pop-up anymore, so I'll turn that off. And then I'll make my brush size just a little bit smaller and just paint through here. Uh, hitting the letter O allows you to see your mask and you can see I need to clean up down here some more uh, anyhow because anything that is white on a mask means that the effect is going to shine through. So in our case, the sky is going to show through. And I don't want that, so hit Command R, and we'll paint this away. And I just realized I didn't check my brush settings. It's on. It was on 50% opacity, and then I'll make the feather 100%, so that way it blends pretty decent. And then we'll just come through here and really clean up these edges. And I'll speed through this because it is not the most entertaining thing to watch. 
Okay, so for the video purposes, I didn't do the greatest job at cleaning up this mask. And obviously on your photo, you're going to want to take the time to really clean up the mask and uh, go a lot slower. But I just want to get through the video and show you the capability. So I'm going to hit the letter O. And we now have our uh, statue with a new background. If you're familiar with using the Sky Swap AI, then you're going to feel right at home because this is essentially the exact same Sky Swap module that was already built into On One 2023. They're just exporting it and turning it into its own standalone application. So if I want to flip the sky, I can just click here. And that's really helpful if you want to change the direction of the sun to match your particular image. You can also move the horizon. If I move this to the left, it brings it down. If I move it to the right, it brings it up. And if I put this right here, you can see I have a little gap at the top there. Well, what I can do is just come down to the scale and I can just scale up the size of this particular photo. Now, if I remember correctly, these are all in 8K. Most photos are not photographed in 8K, which means you're getting a lot of resolution so you can scale them up appropriately to fit your particular photo. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, what you can also do is fade the edge. So this image, you're not really going to see much of a difference. Um, yeah, but if you had like towards the edges you needed, you were getting like this really uh, crunchy look, then what you can do is just fade the edge, make it a little bit softer and makes the transition work a lot better. Now, as far as the level goes, look, if your horizon isn't level, then uh, this gives you the opportunity to kind of change the, uh, the level of the sky. And that's pretty straightforward. I don't think that we need to adjust it for this particular image. I think it worked out just fine. Now, you can also change the warmth of the sky. So if I felt like the sky was not uh, warm enough to match my image, or maybe I need to cool it down, then I can do that here. Uh, now, keep in mind, if you have a sky full of blues, warming it up is kind of going to take away the realistic look of the sky. All right. Now, brightness is self-explanatory. Pull it up, it gets bright. Pull it down, it gets dark. So go, based off of what you're going for, you'll be able to modify accordingly. And then haze, of course, is the exact same haze slider. Uh, make it match with your original image. Like, this is simple compositing. Uh, you know, compositing is kind of a big term for manipulating photos and adding stuff in. But this is, you know, it's AI driven composites. So you're adding in a sky, you want to make it match whatever your original image was. All right. And then, of course, you can blur the background. And this comes in handy, especially if your original sky had a low or a shallower depth of field, then you may want to blur your sky or like in the instance of this particular image, Blurring the sky actually makes this this photo look a little bit more believable. You know, here's the original where the background was pretty blown out and uh, or not interesting. Right. And then I've added this one in and it's kind of helped out. So uh, and then, of course, you have your blur angle, which is just going to change the direction of the blur. Uh, you're not going to see too much of a difference in this particular image. Uh, but with your photo, hopefully you will. Now, we get down to the foreground and lighting mode. And if I turn this off, you can see this is the original lighting that came with the image. And it just doesn't match very well. But if I turn this on, you can see it got a little bit darker with the overall image. Now, the mode here, you may have to play around with multiplier screen. If you're using a darker sky, you're likely going to want multiply. And if you're using a brighter sky, you're likely going to want screen. Don't take that as like the in stone truth. Just take that as maybe you would want that.
Now, over here on the right, we have this little swatch. And I love this because you can choose a color from the sky that will allow you to relight your foreground. And to do that, you can either click on the swatch and you get your cool little color wheels. I'm gonna close those down. Or you can take the color picker or the eyedropper tool and just drag that over and click wherever you want to sample from. So let's say, you know, I really like this light color down here. Now I have this brighter look, but it just to me doesn't match the image. So I'm going to click somewhere in this little dark blue spot, whatever. And that gives me a little bit better of blend with the overall image. All right. Again, play around with that for your photo. And then the next piece here is the foreground. How much of that color do you want to blend in? Uh, again, you have to blend this to taste because it's not going to work the same for everyone. And then we have edges here, which this is just how well is the edge blending with the overall color that you just added in to the foreground. Now, keep in mind, this is working off of the mask that you made earlier. So if your mask isn't very good, these edges they're not going to be very crisp. They're not going to be very clean and you may not like the outcome. And then of course the distance, uh, and this is more of a, how far into the photo do you want it to go? If you look at the bottom of the stairs here, as I pull this slider down or to the right, you can see that that color is just coming further down into the image. Uh, again, blend this, as needed. If you don't need it, then put it all the way down to zero. This is just uh, overall saying, okay, how far into the image do you really want this to go? Now, reflections is actually really cool if you have water. Since I don't have water, I can't really show this, but essentially it's going to take the sky and reflect it into the water so that way it looks more natural. Again, compositing, trying to make this blend as best as it can into your original image, all right? Now, what I will go over uh, is two more things. So the first one is this Model A and Model B, all right? Model A is like the standard algorithm used, and if you happen to have a sky that just doesn't work so good on Model A, then switch it over to Model B and see if that works for you before you start doing some crazy over-the-top uh, G-Wiz masking. Because let the AI really do the heavy lifting and then you come in and do the more refined tuning uh, to your overall image. And then the last thing that we have here inside of the standalone is local adjustments. And this is awesome if you need to make some like some little tweaks to areas right so if i pull up on my exposure here and let's say i wanted to expose this little uh, front plate here i can just drag right over that and now we're and now what i'm getting is the ability to make micro adjustments to my overall tonality of the image and that's pretty huge because now if I, if I needed to, I can even throw in some structure, uh, maybe even open up the shadows so that way it can be red. And maybe these stairs are getting a little too uh, dark or bright for me. So we're going to call this Dodge. And if you don't know what Dodge means, that just means brighten. And then we're going to come over here. We're gonna pull down the exposure and I'll make my brush just a little bit larger. And I'm going to burn the bottom aspect of my frame. And then we'll rename this to burn. So hopefully you found value in today's content. If you want to pick this up, you can save $20 by using free will photos at checkout. You can also use that for anything else in the on one store. That being said, if you're not already, 
Come over to Free Will Photos, join the free community. I'm doing a giveaway for On One Photo Raw 2023. And if you win, you get this plugin for free. The drawing for that is going to be later this month. So check the description box below for the entry information to that. And until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.